Well, when you're wrong, you're wrong, but it's important that you admit when you're wrong, and I f***ed up. My last video, I put in a fuel cooler, and it was working then, and then it wasn't working, but the reason why it wasn't working is actually pretty important and interesting, so stay tuned. First, I think it's important to point out that Holly makes two type of regulators that look identical. This one is a deadhead regulator, and the one down there is a return style regulator. They look identical, but the internals are different. So let's first talk about the deadhead regulator. A deadhead is a non-return regulator, which means all the fuel sits down here and waits for pressure in the carb to alleviate and it fills that void. So it goes in here and out, two different sides. This is a return style regulator. They both look identical, but the diaphragm and internals are different. This is the N and it's indicated by simple text, IN. And on the other side, it's indicated by OUT. And down here in the middle, which would be the N on a deadhead, but on a return system, see the R, this is the return. Because you wouldn't believe how many people thought that this was the only kind of regulator Holly made in this style. They both look identical, but they're not. So let's first talk about the return systems on a carburetor. Yeah, you would think by my logo, I do graphics, but I'm not sure how many people are gonna watch this video. So chalkboard is in the budget, and that's what you guys are gonna get. So we're gonna talk about the three different types of carb setups. Being the deadhead, they both look alike. Fuel goes in here. You can block off this side and take this to the carb. That's the first one we're gonna talk about. So you got the tank, it's gonna come down to the pump, place that filter here and a filter before the carb, but we're just gonna know that for right now. So it goes down to the pump, brings it down to the reg, to the reg, up to the carb. And when your motor pulls fuel to the carb, then the pressure drops and the regulator keeps it at that pressure. This is the least ideal setup. Reason why is because this goes from your tank all the way to your carb. This fuel is not flowing and it can get hot and start to boil. That is what you really don't want. Let's go down to a more optimal setup. This is going to be from a return system. Looks just the same, but it goes in here, out to the carb, and then down to the return. So pump, pulling it from the tank, goes to the return. It pumps it up to the carb. So this is the only section right here that's gonna get hot. That can get hot, cause it's not flowing. And then whatever's left over goes down here, back to the tank. So all this is flowing, not allowing it to get too hot when it goes through the whole entire system. This is a better setup. And this is the most ideal setup, which is with a bypass regular regulator or a return regulator except for this one we're plugging this side and it's gonna come in here and that's gonna be your turn so right here goes to your pump goes through the rail of your carb to the regulator and then back to your tank and you can see right here it's leaving less fuel to sit by the motor and by your exhaust to get hot so what did I do well, I thought it'd be really slick to put the cooler on the return. See for cooler. So that way, when it goes through, you have the ice and it cools as it goes through. And if your car is off, you could cool your entire thing of fuel. And I thought that was kind of slick because I didn't put any more weight in the front. And this actually worked. So now that we know the three types of systems, we can now think about my problem. Well, I didn't have the problem. And then all of a sudden I had a problem and it threw me for a loop. Cause remember I had this on the return and it was all working fine. And I decided like, you know, I didn't like the way this looked. So I wanted to take all this apart, clean it up. And I thought, you know, at the same time that I'm here, I'm just going to take the regulator apart and I'm going to take the filter apart. Just make sure it's all clean. 
And when I took the regulator apart, there's a little piece of like rubber or plastic that was kind of jammed up in here. And I was like, how did that get in there? And it was actually restricting the flow going into the regulator. So I put it all back together, flipped the switch on, and all of a sudden, my pressure was at nine PSI and I couldn't take any adjustment out. I was like, what in the world is going on? I even grabbed that gauge right there, put it on there, still nine. I even grabbed that regulator, took all that crap apart and put it there. It was still nine PSI. So I said, it's not the regulator. It's not the gauge. What changed? I was like, and it dawned on me. I was like, that little piece of rubber, man, it was restricting the flow. So let's go back to the board and let's talk about why that was happening. So carburetor setups are not about pressure, they're about volume of flow. And if you can't alleviate the flow going into the regulator to the carb back to the tank fast enough, it's gonna build up pressure and you're not gonna have adjustability in that screw. So this is what happened. When I took out a little piece of plastic, it was flowing a lot more fuel through the system. And it had, you know those little straws from like you had back in the day and you had to suck that stuff all the way up into the straw? It takes a lot more force to do that, right? All right, what do we have here is a very simple Bill Mai, the science guy, little experiment. I got two glasses of water with the same amount of water. I'm gonna blow it through this one and I'm gonna blow it through this one and you'll see how this one's more restricted and this one it pretty much gets by this straw very fast. Straight straw, bigger diameter. Done. Skinny straw, more bends. A lot more back pressure. So essentially, that's what was happening on my return. So what I did was this. I just said, you know what? This is gonna be a good test. If this will work, then that is what happened. So all I did was this. I bypassed that and I flipped the switch and by golly, I got the pressure down to seven PSI. Now, I will say this, I really do need a larger return line because there's still a little too much back pressure, but I was able to get the pressure back to seven. It wasn't pushing back past the seats and the bowls. And I was like, you know what? I'm not touching it, it's working. And that's how I screwed myself, guys. Well, you know what? Even though I screwed myself, I actually learned a lot about a carburetor's return system more than I thought I would ever learn just by reading instructions and saying, do this, do this, this is how you want to do it. I now understand how all this has to work and hopefully it helps out you guys too. And I thought it'd be a cool experiment to take this deadhead, since that little piece of rubber or whatever in there was restricting the flow going into it and it was all working with this cooler on there. I thought it'd be a cool experiment to get the fittings that way I don't have to just easily take this all apart and put it back together. But I was gonna put this before this regulator because a deadhead basically is a restriction regulator. So basically, it's like a controlled restriction. So if I, in theory, if I put this here and then restrict it enough so that way I don't build up too much back pressure going back to the tank and put this on, I should be able to get this back down to seven PSI. I'm not gonna run it that way because you obviously don't ever wanna restrict any fuel going to your engine. But just for this, I thought it would be a pretty cool experiment. I know not that many people have stayed to the end of this video, but if you have, I say thank you. And don't forget to subscribe. And if you wanna see this, let me know. Until next time, peace.